so good evening it's uh, Thursday night about 7 p.m. and I'm uh, heading up the side of Side Pike just above the Langdale Valley where we can see the Langdale Pikes the band and um, Bowfell and Crinkle Crags just over here it's uh, very breezy and I think this might be my last opportunity for the next few days um, to get to not get wet with the rain uh, although by the look of the sky I could be getting wet tonight as well so I'm just uh, for the last few years I've been I've been wanting to replicate an image I took 10 years ago up here um, and it's always evaded me uh, so I'm gonna go for it again tonight just a bit of a, a recce mission given the conditions and we'll see how we get on but yeah some amazing scenes around here have a look at that so you've got the Langdale Pikes there this is the Valley of Mickledon the large bowl and that lump in front of us there now is um, the band and the peak above it is Bowfell and if you go over to the left you can see Crinkle Crags and you can probably see where it gets its name from given the shape of it and then this way we've got Bleetarn and Weatherlam and this is Lingmore Fell behind this is the start of Side Pike uh, there's lots of heather around here this time of year sort of mid to late August so maybe see if I can uh, capture a little bit of that see this is nice with the the gate in the gar in the foreground oh, what a valley that is though look at that fantastic so yeah okay well, I'll continue to make my way up I'll catch up with you in a bit and we'll see what we see okay so I'm thinking two things first thing is a I'm struggling to climb up the hill with my big backpack on and the second thing I'm then thinking is I might try and find a composition here rather than continuing to struggle uphill so um, it's pretty obvious that there's not going to be any amazing light tonight so it's more about just seeing what you can what i can do with a technical shot now if you followed my last vlog up home fell you'll know that i have a bit of a thing for grasses plant life if you will and rocks on the surface and then some mid ground and some distance uh distant interest and there's this little spot here which has caught my eye so i'm thinking I'm thinking I might have a setup for this now I'll get my camera out in a bit and you'll hopefully see that so it's not the sort of thing I want to be setting up willy-nilly should we say you need to really commit to something so I'm going to start using more of my phone as a, a mobile viewfinder if you will um, just to save me through going through the process of setting up and setting down and you know committing to shots if you will so just to use the the viewfinder there which i find is quite helpful um so yeah it's it's a question of how far you go with it now do i keep going up to the top get more of the same weather you should re i should really do that I should just push yourself as far as you can go get to the right place this isn't the spot i want to be in um, 
which sounds silly doesn't it but it's like I always say there's a shot to be had everywhere and it's just a case of finding it let me come behind you there yeah you see this might be okay See, I think for me, it pays just to observe for a while. Just to get yourself in, in the approximate location you want to be in. And just take a few moments to, uh, just to have a good look. See if there's anything, what jumps out. So I think what what this evening is is a good example in how when there's no you know amazing weather at light you know if this place was bathed in amazing side light coming across there it's quite obvious what you have to do and that is just capture that scene whereas when the lights flat like it is now that's not good enough you know it's not good enough for somebody with 20 years experience as a landscape photographer you can't you can't just take a snapshot and that's what a lot of photographs you see are and I think you've got to look that extra little bit take a bit more time to find something really quite considered I'll give you a good example of that the other night I was um, I was at Southport Pier and I took some photographs from there um, never photographed it before so it was it was brand new to me um, and I went through a, some simple steps doing that the, the first one was arrived just at a general recce looked where the sun was setting identified three possible shots quickly looked at each one worked them out for the merits discounted two of them pretty much instantly went to the third one and spent about 45 minutes taking variations of one image and when i'm taking that image you can see how these micro adjustments which i always keep going on about with my videos you know micro adjustments to to make things line up you can see how that re i i believe i benefited from making those micro adjustments whereas i could have i could have just rolled up and i mean there was people coming next to me taking photographs and going you know and they're not considered photographs they're just snaps and that's the, you know it's not good enough for me for what i want to do you know the 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 enjoyment for me is crafting the image and that's you know i've got away I, for, for the last 20 years i've i've got away from i've got away with making snapshots and i think you need to do more i think i need to do more you know to get more out of it you know i'm not talking about the end result i'm not talking about will somebody buy a print or not will it look good in a book i'm talking about my pleasure my enjoyment but yeah it's interesting okay well i'm not sure what to do right now it's uh I i've made myself a promise watching my youtube videos back and analyzing the way I take my photographs that I'm not I'm going to take less photographs but I'm going to take well try and take better quality photographs 
and I think this moment now is a good example of coming true to my word on that and, and to myself you know it'd be too easy just to whip out a lens and machine gun fire this and say oh I've got it but it, you know it's got to be worth doing I think one of the problems I have is I've got such a collection of images if it ain't better than something I've already got then is there any point in doing it which there, there obviously is if you enjoy doing it but you know you've you've got to want to enjoy it haven't you right what time are we on half past seven right I'm gonna have a wander a bit further up got my breath back now just do it in bite-sized pieces and I'll see if I can uh, I'll see if I can make a bit more progress and we'll see if anything opens up okay so I was just making my way up the path up the side of side pike um, I can now see Bleetan over there um, Weatherlam is the higher peak and then if you come around here you've got obviously uh, the band Crinkle Crags, Bowfell, Mickled in the valley there and then the Langdale Pikes the campsite for the uh, Lake District National Park down there and just on my way up I noticed this scene down here now there's a dry stone wall here what starts on the crag there and it meanders its way down and then my van is just down there parked illegally and then what you've got is you've got the wall what leads us up there and I think that's Pike or Blisco um, or maybe that's further beyond it and then you've got the footpath what leads us down to Blee Tarn. Now I would never in my wildest dreams have imagined this shot but I've stumbled across it and I'm thinking this could make quite a, a technically interesting shot which are the shots I'm really craving these days so I'm going to set up here I'm going to see what I can compose we've got the old um, fence in the foreground as well there's, there's quite a lot going on and I think with my new camera it's going to make for quite a nice setup I've got a feeling it's going to absolutely throw it down soon as well so I'm going to try and get on with this so this is my new camera it's a Cambo Actus XCD I've had one on I rented one for about three weeks two or three weeks and I'm very very happy with it I've got a new lens to use with it as well which is uh, seems to be an outstanding outstanding lens here it is it's the Hasselblad 40 millimeter CFE IF lens Do you ever get that feeling where you know it's in it's gonna rain in the next few minutes? Well that is the feeling I exact feeling I've got now. So I need really need to get on with this. So I'm gonna call that my infinity. Right, do my check, so F16, focus to, oh, focus to infinity. There we go, it does take a minute or so to set up, but the results are very much worth it. Where are we going? Let's have a look. There we go. Okay, let's lock everything down. Level it all off. Now, what I can do is I can apply a bit of tilt to that. There we go, take that first one. I think I'm going to lift myself up. 
here I'm going to lift up a little bit higher for the next one because I think just by being a bit lower I'm losing the the feeling of everything joining together with the the path the, the walls if you will see what I might do I might try for Yeah, I think that's going to work better. There we go. All right. There we go. Does it work? Does it work or have I imagined it? There we go. I can hide my van now behind behind the rocks. So it's it, there's no cloning involved, so it's a more truer image if you will. And I'm gonna take two shots for this one. I'm gonna take one shifted up for the the sky and the higher elements and then i'm going to shift down and get more of the foreground in and then i can join those two together and that will give me a, a wider angle but upon reflection i think it's probably going to be best if i make my image this way and then shift left and right so take it in portrait there we go wind's picking up now oh. Okay, so that's the middle, and then I can shift across, take one for the left, and then I can shift that way and take one from the right. So I'll be able to join all those together, and that'll be that'll give me the effect of a much wider focal length lens. So it's carrying one lens, but it can do many things and it can do it accurately and true as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna, let me see if I can bring you down here. So I'm looking on the back of the camera here, hopefully you can see this, but I'm zooming into various parts. So that's the bottom corner. You can see the heather on the screen there. And then if we go into Weatherland there, you can see how sharp all that's looking. And then if we go into the middle, now that's not looking as sharp down there. And the reason that is, is because, because I've tilted the lens, the wedge of focus is, is, is it's, it's above that plane. So this is where you would typically, you would typically have to open your aperture up even more to, to increase that wedge. So I'll, I'll let me try and do that. So if I go to F22, I'm gonna have to brighten the exposure up a little bit. There we go. And I'll take that now and we'll see. Right just reviewing that on the back of the screen that's not what I've got in my mind that doesn't look dramatic enough to me so I'm going to have to the only way I'm going to improve upon that is to get lower and tilt or tilt the camera down so I'm going to do that next because I think that's going to that's what it needs to be improved is that going to improve matters no I need to be higher again so let's bring my centre column up
Now that's probably it there. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Right, so let me get it level. Right, this is the shot now. So let me just do my double check. So my F number, I'm focused to infinity. My aperture's open. Zooming into the immediate foreground, which is nice and sharp. I've got three degrees of tilt on there. Do my checks around the scene. It seems to look fine. So I'm going to commit to that one. Okay, so I'm, go I'm going to widen this the field of view by shifting my lens to the side a little bit. So that's 10 millimeters to one side. And then if I go to the other side as well, how far can I go without I'm going to say to there which is about 13 mil and that brings in bleed arm then now those three images I can join together they'll all stitch perfectly because the nothing's changed just the sensors shifted rather than the lens um, and that could work out all right I mean the lights very flat you know there's nothing exciting going on in terms of lighting but that composition is really pleasing. So I'm going to go a bit higher again with that if I can, because I'll sand in my tripod there. Southport sand. Yeah, so that's it going to work even better, I think, the higher up I get. The problem then is your lens needs to be a bit wider. Right, that looks great on the back of the camera. I think I just need to make sure the technicalities of it are right. So I've got, see, there's no point in putting... There's no point in putting wide you know making a, a really considered shot having something immediately in the foreground and it all be blurred you know it needs to be that's brilliant that's capturing what what i initially saw good right i'm gonna try it again in i'm gonna see how much movement i can get in the So in the, hor in the horizontal arrangement, I can take three shots on top of each other. Um, so it get, it's just providing me with a wider field of view. So hopefully these will come out well and they'll definitely stitch well together. And there we go. Right, so let me just check again. We've got the foreground. The foreground's what I'm all about. I, I just love the. I love the detail of the foreground when it's when it's really close to the image. There we go. Oh, am I tall enough to see that? There we go. Yeah, see that's, it's a shame some idiots parked a, a bright white van there, because that, that would have worked really nicely. That's the, that's the composition, definitely. It's from here, it's not from down there. If I just shift that to the left, so you can see that boulder on the on the wall just to the left, I want to get that in the frame. And it looks to me like I've got space to the right. 
where I'm not going to crop off the path. So I'm just going to recompose that. Again, micro adjustment and take it. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant. And that's why I love landscape photography. It came out with absolutely no expectations and that is a really strong image, I think. I bet you're looking at that and thinking it's rubbish. Don't see anything interesting about it, but to me, that's really pleasing. Now, I'm gonna zoom into my van. See, I don't, I don't wanna crop that out. I wanna make that image without having to clone that van out. I'm gonna do an experiment as well. Where I take another shot without any tilt. Then I can compare them side by side. This is me being a total pixel peeping geek. But, you know, if you're making high quality images, you need to care about your pixels, don't you? That is absolutely brilliant. So the walls leading us in, got heather on both sides. We go right down to the van, which you might or might not see. We pick up the path and we follow it all the way around. Now, is the path broken in that middle section by the heather? It is, look. It is. Now, if I was the size of Colin Bell, it wouldn't be. But because I'm a normal man, it's broken. But do I really want to include that? Is it? It's not going to make a difference, is it? I think I'm on the limit of my focal length there. Let's have a look. What else can I can I get from here in terms of improving that? See if I'm I've just moved forward about six inches and I've lost that wall. You, you need, I, or I need, I need that wall. That It only works because of that knuckle of the wall, if you will. That's my feelings on it. So let's see if I can, yeah. You've got to have that stone in. I'm not going to improve on what I've got. I, I really don't think I am. Right, I'm going to apply a bit of tilt to this. And as if by magic, all my foreground elements come perfectly into sharp, sharpness. Make a final adjustment to my rise and fall. There we go. How far can I go with that? Tell you what. I'm going to push that to its absolute limit. And I'm going to do like a vertical um, a vertical stitch on it, and then I can recompose it in um, in Lightroom to, to make sure I've got every element I want in it. Just do another one with a bit more sky. See, this camera shoots at three to two aspect, uh, sorry, it's four to three aspect ratio, which is a bit squatter, a bit fatter than a 35 mil camera. Because you, if you use 35 mil, or when you use 35 mil, you've got three to two. So it's a, it's a lot thinner an image. Um, so I, if I was to consider that in three to two, I would probably get the, the height I want there. But yeah, I rec I've definitely got it from there. I'll just have another look at it again in um, landscape orientation. 
and I don't think there's going to be any harm trying for that as well. And then I've got every eventuality, but I think I think the shots in the bag, if if you will, it's it's there, and you just wouldn't, you know, you just wouldn't have known it was here. There we go. Right, let's just have another quick look in the one shot format. I think that's it. So I'll take I'll take this and then I can talk us through it because I feel quite strongly about images like this. So what do you see first of all when you look at that? For me, it's the rock on the bottom left corner. So you need to show all of that rock. Now, if I just make a tiny adjustment there, I'll take this shot. We can pull it up on screen and then we can have a look. You've got your railings, your fence, your knuckle with the big um, stone. I've not cropped that out. The, fen the wall goes all the way down, heather on both sides. My van there. the cattle grid and then the fence take the path takes us off and up into the fell so yeah I really like that I think that's got potential so we'll see I'm satisfied with what I've got there that's that to me is really enjoyable it's really interesting in creating creating that image you know for the last five or ten minutes whatever that's been that's all I've been thinking about and that's why I do landscape photography you know it's it's brilliant you just uh, you're in another world, aren't you? I mean, it's the flattest scene you've you've, you've ever seen. You know, there's nothing in, of, of any dramatic effect there. You know, very dark, very somber, if you will. Um, this way is a lot more interesting, a lot more visually more, more appealing. But there isn't the foreground interest, and uh, and you need to find what well, I need to find something that jumps out and and makes you want to take the image okay right well I'm going to leave it there for this evening um, hope you enjoyed a brief glimpse of the Langdale Valley and um, you can see all this heathers out now and uh, it doesn't look like it's in full bloom or it's either been and gone and I've missed it again for something like the 11th year running but um, yeah, I'm glad I came out nonetheless. It's, uh, it would have been nicer to be a bit more dramatic light-wise, but I'm quite chuffed with what I've got. And uh, if I see anything else, um, I'll, I'll catch you again in an in a encore of the video. But for now, we'll leave it there. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes and supports. If you're not a subscriber already, please consider subscribing. It's, um, I want to do things a bit different. I am a landscape photographer first and a vlogger second, so I have a very odd style of doing my vlogs compared to the norm but it's uh, that's what I've been doing all my life been trying to be different to other people and individual that's uh, that's who I am so I'm going to bring that to YouTube as well so yeah uh, thanks very much and uh, I'll catch you again on the next video all the best for now see you soon